Uh, for skill acquisition, you mentioned technical and financial skills are the most important. Do you have specific skills in mind? This is from Kristen. And if so, learning resources that you recommend. Now, why I say this is that uh, people, when they're hired today, especially young professionals, it's kind of assumed there are certain things you can do. It's assumed you know how to figure out a budget. It's assumed you can do a spreadsheet. It's assumed that you know something about social media. Uh, it, it, we're kind of in that world now. It used to be those things would be learned or you'd have somebody that does it. But now you're kind of hired as a kind of one all shop, like you should do these things. So I, I definitely say, and it's because what I find is if you have a bachelor's degree and not a master's degree, and you've come back from a Fulbright experience, and you're looking to work in an organization, and a lot of the organizations I work in are kind of governmental, NGO, international, so forth, the most likely jobs that you're going to be uh, qualified for are administrative jobs. It's not going to be, you're not going to be hired as a program manager right away, right? You're going to be hired as a program assistant. And so as a program assistant, you're going to be starting supporting other program managers. You could advance up to that, but you're going to be supporting other people. How you're going to be supporting them is through managing their budgets, organizing their travel, uh, you know, maybe being supporting an event on the back end, maybe from a logistical standpoint. That doesn't mean you can't contribute your language skills and these other skills, but the reality is that that's kind of where you're going to find yourself. So that's why having budget and finance experience, knowing how to write a grant, for instance, especially if you're going to be hired by a not-for-profit becomes really important. 